right, welcome. We're, I'm here with Michelle for our Modern Priestess conversation. And um, I'm so excited to have you and connect with you. We um, have a little bit of a history together now at this point compared to many of the other women that I'm having a conversation with. So it's always nice to like tap in with someone who is just like a real sister and mm -hmm. has like grabbed me by the shoulders before <laughs> and looked in my face. Um, yeah, so thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Kim. Yeah. So we are talking about embodiment, grounding, um, feeling alive in our bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think where I'd love to start uh, is um, these retreats that you and I have been attending, um, hosted by Allie, who's also in the series, uh, starting off the day with naked yoga with you. And can you just unpack why we're doing that? What, like, what is that process? Because you craft it so beautifully. And um, I just, I want you to explain not just the fit, like, yes, we're physically getting naked, but like the emotional and spiritual mm -hmm. shedding that kind of happens in that process as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I guess just going back, I um, spent a good part of my 20s deeply involved in a Buddhist meditation practice called Vipassana, and it was one where you essentially meditated on sensations in your body. So that really brought me back to mm -hmm. myself. That was my first process of shedding all the layers of the expectations of what everybody had of me, um, the stories, and really came back to um, the source of who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from there, spent a lot of time uh, studying yoga practices because once I became a mother, two hours of meditating a day still just wasn't very practical, and oh, yeah. I really needed to move my body. Um, yes. And then I started studying with a high priestess and really learned more about how ceremony is so much more powerful when we are sky clad, so when we are naked. So combining all these spiritual practices, and essentially my goal in different spiritual practices is finding the commonalities. So what is the same and what resonates because ultimately I think that as people, or I know that as people, the way that we're going to rise is by coming together. So if we can take these ancient practices, find what resonates, then we'll start to find what is common and how we can come to essentially the source of who we are. So I was in the city practicing yoga, and all of a sudden I found out somebody was teaching naked yoga. And it just, you know, uh, I'm sure you know this, Katie, but intuitively, and I think as somebody who plays the role of a priestess, um, sometimes you just know you need to be somewhere, and it overtakes you, and you, you're just pulled. And yes, totally. <laughs> there was a man who was teaching naked yoga and he just happened to be going to a party a couple of doors over and I just headed over there and said, okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> and I just knew I needed to do it. And also because there was no, there weren't any females in the city. It was just a man who was leading the practice. And I really felt it was so important to create a safe space for women. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a past, I think like many, where um, as women we often do what we're told, we often uh, try to be polite, we try to be kind, we try to just go along with things, and I felt really deeply that um, a female needed to hold space um, in these naked yoga practices. Um, so that women could feel safe and so that they could tune into their bodies and do what they were feeling called to do rather than what they were being told to do. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah, really essential. And then there's like moon time, right? Like women are going to have other 
stories around like, oh, but I'm bleeding right now. Mm -hmm. How does that work? And I just think that there's so many other pieces that I wasn't confident. It's not that I wasn't confident that he couldn't handle it. I just knew that I needed to step into that role. Um, but what I really envisioned when I started teaching naked yoga was a group of women who were open and ready to move into this practice. Yes. And then another just piece of magic happened when I joined Ali's group. And then she had the group and she asked and it was just the perfect fit. And it was one of those moments where you recognize why all the pieces happened. Yeah. You know, look back and you're like, oh, so that's why I did that. And that's why I was called to do that. And all those things prepared me for this moment in time. Um, so the actual practice is very much a practice of stripping those layers off. So stripping off all the stories that we're told about how we should look, how we should be, um, all the emotions, and really coming back to our core center being where we are humans in this flesh. And when we start feeling our flesh, when we start really being in our bodies, embodied, then we come to a place where all the rest falls away. And then we become a channel for not only the divine, but because we're in our bodies, we're still here on this earth. And I think a lot of times we can, very many of us are deeply connected to the divine, but then we f lose our grounding and then we start floating and we yeah. start spinning and we don't know where we are because I think we are from the stars and we can travel between realms. And so if we lose our connection to our body, we start to lose our connection to our place in this world at this time, mm -hmm. and the job that we're doing here right now. Right. And the other piece that I think is so crucial is as we start to embody our bodies, we also start to heal the earth. Absolutely. So we can get into this whole like environmental, these rules, those rules, these are all the things we need to do for the earth. But I think the thing that we can do most um, efficiently and also uh, the piece that has the, is the most potent is coming back into our bodies. And especially as women, we, uh, the earth, is a feminine element and as women we birth new life we are the vessel that holds life and it's the same as mother earth and when we come to our bodies we are saying yes to this world yes to this planet and that in itself starts to heal the earth because then we start to have just the intuitive perceptions of what we need to do in order to make this planet work. But as we keep trying to be somewhere else and we get so caught up in the stars and in the realms and in the, mm -hmm. we forget, we, we start to forget the planet and we have to come together because ultimately we are a channel from the earth to the sky. Right. And we channel energy through our body. So having those feet firmly planted is essential and the beautiful thing about a practice like yoga is you can actually just speak about the body you can speak about the skin the hands you can walk people through their whole bodies feeling their whole bodies connecting with their whole bodies and never go into that um cosmic realm and so then you can start to bring so many more people into their bodies. You can bring a uh, very masculine, uh, uh, left brained, like, you know, mathematical, everything needs to fit in a box, people. They can come in. You can bring in the people who are up in the stars. You can start bringing everybody into the body. And then we also find this common place on earth where we can connect. Yeah. And start to actually make. Um, an impact because we are all coming together as one and we all have these human bodies.
Yeah, the East Indies. Yeah, yeah, like it's so fascinating, Katie. <laughs> oh, I absolutely. This is such an essential balancing point to this series. Mm. Um, because everyone that I, at least today, you know, we're, we're really, we're going up here, which yeah. is great, which is fun, which is informative, which is what some of us are here to do. Absolutely. But we won't do it as well if we are, if our feet aren't planted, if we aren't feeling grounded. And like this conversation right now is the most grounded that I have felt mm. in so far in doing these because I usually sit down and then it's just like you know and off we go so which is super fun but um but we have to have this balance we have to be able to do both Mm -hmm. um or we're not going to be able to I feel like I lose my ability to connect Mm -hmm. with other people when Mm -hmm. um I am not grounded absolutely Uh, right yeah so that's like it for me when I know it's like okay I need to you need to come back down and like go outside, put my hands on the earth. Like what are some ways, um, just real like tactical ways for people like me who are like living really up here a lot of the time and need to be reminded like, hey, come, you know, do some grounding. What does that mean? What does it mean to like do grounding work? Yeah, this is great. I love it. Yeah. I, I'm super practical and uh, I love the practices so much. Um, I'll give you a quick example of what – I've been doing since I got on the call, okay. just to be super grounded. Yeah, I'm standing right now yeah. at a standing desk. I'm standing with my feet pointing forward. I'm standing with my weight balanced between two feet. As I'm speaking to you, I'm feeling my feet. Yeah. I'm yeah. feeling my legs. I'm noticing my breath all while I'm speaking to you. And that's a place that we can all get to. And I can feel it. Like I just said, I was like, I feel so grounded. And it's because you're doing that, right? Yes. It's like because I can totally feel the energy of you just being so solid mm. and really – so, yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> it's like really like, yeah, I can totally tell that you're doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's me when I really come into my processing work. I was talking to you, a friend of mine, and we were having this conversation, you know, in preparation for today about what does it mean to be a priestess? And she yeah. was saying, well, you know, I think maybe it's more of a verb than it is an actual noun and that some of us are called to priestess. And when I'm called to priestess, that's when I really fully – embody in a way that I don't even do on a regular basis and it's so fascinating because it's not what I do so much as what I'm being it's what I'm feeling and um, embodiment is very much the yin it's the moon it's the feminine Um, it's that quality of feeling and being and I still want to get into the practical I'm (laughs) <laughs> this is beautiful. No, you're. I'm just. I'm soaking you up, Michelle. You just yeah. keep going. Yeah. Let me give you some really good practical things. So, okay. moving your body, obviously. So you know, any kind of movement practice is great, especially if it's one where you can start to really feel. So moving with music is really great because you can start to like. Um, it's like you translate the sound into movement. So like. Mm-hmm. If you have like higher pitch, like say the melody, you're like, and you're like, and really low, deep bass, you're like down there in your feet. And you can start to almost take the music and translate it through your body and then start to move it. And so then all of a sudden, it's not even a mental game anymore. You get out of your head and you're simply body and music. So that's beautiful. Having a regular practice of movement, yoga is great because it, actually asks you to come out of your mind and come into your body, come into your sensations, come into your breath. Um, I personally also like a really fiery practice sometimes because sometimes I really just need to ground Mm -hmm. and I need to feel my body. So if I do a workout where I'm actually sore for a few days, I have no choice but to feel my body. Right. No choice. Because, like, I wake up and I'm like, muscles. And not only is, 
th- that I have no choice, but every time I feel them, I'm reminded of how strong I am. Yeah. Over yeah. and over and over again. So that's really powerful medicine. Something else on a daily basis, something that I do, which I think is a really, really powerful practice that anybody can do, is when I'm in the shower, I have like a scrubby, like I have crazy practices in the shower, but I have like scrubby mitts, and I have two of them. (laughs) And I literally exfoliate my whole entire body. So on a daily basis, making physical contact with every single part of your body. So you're feeling it, you're feeling your elbows, you're feeling, you're feeling, you're feeling. And then I oil my whole body, like head to toe. So it's even sometimes just having that physical contact with your body. Um, And then paying attention to textures, you know, like flannel sheets, silk sheets, like really getting into the sensation and feeling like, what feels good on your body and what reminds you of your body, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I, I will second the sh- When I am in a good grounding practice, I do the same thing in the shower with a washcloth and some coconut oil. And it's like every, every single square inch of my skin. Um, and I feel so much more myself. I like, Oh, I know myself. I'm, like, connected to myself. I know, yeah, I just feel like I know me better when I get into those practices and I stay really diligent about them. Um, so that's, like, a really simple one. But I, yeah, when I'm, and I'm not doing that right now. That's something I should, I should get back into that. Um, yeah. And plus your skin, like, I've seen your skin <laughs> is so gorgeous. I can tell that you take amazing care of yourself. And, um so that's inspiring for me too. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to like get back into my my coconut oil routine in the shower. Um, you brought up fi- feeling fiery and fire, um, and I know that you play with fire. You're a fire dancer. No. What is that like? And how did you get started in that? And why has that called out to you? Why is that part of your practice? Mm. Well, something that I always go back to is the elements. So. Air, fire, water, and earth. And that's another go-to for me. So coming back into my body is medicine, being embodied, feeling my body. But really second to that is the elements and actually experiencing them in my body. So feeling that earth element to ground me, feeling my feet, feeling that fire element when I need it. So, okay, this this is really cool. I'm like, (laughs) so exciting. Okay, so... Earth is at the bottom, and it's always at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Water goes down, Mm -hmm. fire goes up, and then air is at the top. So, Uh, can you see? Yes. Like, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are the alchemical symbols for the elements, but this is uh, the alchemy that we can use throughout our lives to affect change. We can use these elements. So, for example... The peak of the summer, were their fire. It's all fire because the sun is highest in the sky. All of our energy is pulled up. Just like if you think about the plants, the blossoms, everything is blooming. Everything is ripe. It's all, that's where the energy is. And that's where it is for us too. So all people have headaches. People are lightheaded. People are having like heat stroke. So then you add the water element. It brings the energy down. So that's why putting water on your head, drinking water, watermelon, that's why that helps. So you're counterbalancing the fire element because there's too much fire. Mm-hmm. So if you're down in the earth, like in the underworld, um, which happens often in the middle of winter, everybody has got the you know seasonal effective where they're just, you know, they're doing this deep work and they're losing sight of their connection to the divine. They're losing sight of the stars. They're losing sight of, you know, all those realms. And so when you're down there adding fire, fire will start to bring you up. Yeah. Which is why we like the, okay, that makes so much sense. That's so simple, but it clicked with me a little bit differently just there. Yeah. yeah. It's a good reminder. Yeah. So for me, like, 
fire is huge because I'm always, and I think for a lot of us, you know, you get, you get bogged down by life. You go through all sorts of challenges. Um, we're constantly dipping down and dipping up and dipping down and dipping up. But that fire element is so powerful to bring us up. It's so powerful. And so I've had like a really intense year and I feel like I've been through a bit of a, um, vision quest, but it's not just one vision quest. It's like over and over and over. And I feel like I am just absolutely transforming very much like the, the Phoenix coming up from the ashes or, you know, a butterfly in metamorphosis, all this stuff is happening. And so for me, I'm like bringing that energy up. So if you combine dancing and then you throw fire into it, it's, uh, it's so powerful. It is so powerful because you start with that place of fear where you're like, oh, shit, this is fire. Yeah, like, totally. I, I, would be that, I would be moving super slow at first and just, like, very respectful of the flames. and Yeah. Absolutely. And then yeah. you start to, like, build a relationship with fire and you get more comfortable with fire and you get more comfortable with that element of fire. Amazing. And I think the more comfortable we become with fire, the more we can start to harness the power of fire to help us yeah. to yeah. rise up. Okay. okay. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. That's amazing. I didn't, okay. Yeah. I mean, I've always thought it's just like, that's a really beautiful practice. That's a very, like, it looks like an ancient practice. Mm -hmm. That looks like a wild woman practice. But like, I get it now. I see yeah. why you're doing that. Yeah. That's really powerful. Really powerful. It is. And the other thing about fire, too, is my, it's one of the teachings from my high priestess, but she says fire and incense and anything that's burning, the other thing that it does is it connects you between realms. So the uh, lower realms and the mid realms and mid and upper, like, and it makes sense because it's moving, right? Totally. totally. So it opens a ton of energy moving. Yeah. 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 Okay. I love that. That's why, okay, we've been doing a lot, and it's, you know, it's still like, it's like 90 degrees out today, but in the evenings, it cools off just enough to where we can tolerate a fire outside, mm -hmm. but I start to get, I like crave, and I think probably a lot of people are like, not even just women, but I think a lot of people really are starting to crave that, just like sitting in front of a fire, and mm -hmm. just seeing that, ener like, that cleansing, that movement, mm -hmm. um, it's really healing for me. And you, like, as soon as we can tolerate it, we are building a fire outside and just sitting and watching it and just, uh, and just being with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. You always inspire me to like look at the elements in a little bit of a different way, not in a more complicated way. You actually simplify them to me so well that it's like, Oh yeah, these are such, um, you can do it, <laughs> you know, like you can go, you can do this. You can work with these elements in a really, um, healing way. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very like elementary. It's like these yeah. main building blocks and, yeah. um, and they have different, they all have different feelings and different almost like personalities. And they're like these entities that are so powerful. Um, and, We've, a lot of us have lost touch with them, especially in our society. And many people are staring at a screen instead of at a fire. Instead of at a fire, right. Yeah. And so that's where the call is coming back. And I also live in a climate that's very extreme. We have, um, oh, I don't know Fahrenheit. Oh. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I can tell you. And then, no. I'm but like really, really extreme cold and really, really extreme mm -hmm. heat. Yeah, and that's how it is here too. Yeah, so our seasons are really distinct. And we had one winter up here where it was so cold and it was so long. And I was like actually making little fires like in my, like near my little altar. Like every day, like I was burning sage and burning sweetgrass. And like I was literally, I had like a little bowl and a I was like, cauldron where it's just yeah. like, I need to see it burning. Yeah. I was building fires every day, and then we were going to move out of the country, or not out of the country, out to the country, and it didn't work. Um, but one of the things that there was out in the country is there was a wood stove in this one property we were going to buy, and I realized so much of it was the wood stove. 
Yeah. Holding <laughs> you. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then we just built one. And quite literally, that is how I make it through the winter. And it makes me love the winter because yeah. I sit in front of a fire. Me too. I love that. Yeah. And yeah. the heat, like the radiant heat, like the practice of putting things, of tending the fire, mm -hmm. the fact that you can burn things. It's yeah. like you can transmute things into fire. So all of a sudden it's really that Kali energy too, you know? It's like how can we create more space? And that is another huge piece in embodiment is space. Thank you for bringing this up because I was not going to – I yes – Talk about that, please. <laughs> this is important. Yeah, I, that just like hit me like, oh, right. Yeah, that's really space. important. So, yeah. yeah. So space is huge and it's it's multidimensional. So <laughs> having space with your finances, having space with your time, your schedule, slowing down. Yeah. yeah. The more we slow down, the more we start to feel the more we start to ground, the more having space by coming into the present moment, having space in our living environment. So clearing out all the things that we don't need and trusting that we actually know. Like a huge part of creating space is trusting yourself, mm -hmm. becoming present, trusting that you don't actually need all of that stuff. Yeah. You don't need to spend all of that money. You don't need to have all of those possessions. And trusting that you don't need to do so much. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to earn it. There's, you know, that's, uh, that's been something, um, I'm still, I still, that's a personal, I need, I meditate with that. Of like, you don't have to earn mercy or grace mm. or, um, your divine like there, it's already here, mm -hmm. so you don't need to work so hard to earn it because it's all all of that's already right here, mm -hmm. and you don't need to be working so hard. This is for me personally, oh, um, and I think a lot of us just feel like well, and it's just the way that we've been brought up and the way our society works. It's like you put in X amount of hours and you make X. You know, it's all a formula. Mm -hmm. um, for how much input you need and then how much you get back. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a really, that's been a tough one, but I'm noticing it so much more now where it's mm -hmm. just like, you know what, I am worthy to receive what's available right now. Mm -hmm. I don't need to earn it. Um, so that's a big one. Yeah, and it's a balancing act too, right? It's like yeah, the yang, the yang versus the yin. It's like we've been so in this like, God, masculine, yang, like fiery energy, like left brain for so long. And part of our healing is balancing it out with the feminine, with the goddess, with the feeling, with the, the moon, like that yin embodiment. And so mm -hmm. it's like this constant practice of just stopping and being. And the fascinating thing is it's not that you – necessarily do less, but rather than trying so hard and having it all come from your head, you are actually just internally motivated to do it. Yes. yes. Like you might just take a break and lie and be pretty still for quite a long time. And then at some point the fire comes back mm -hmm. and you might just get really frustrated at yourself for being so still for so long. Like often you see that. Or you just, all of a sudden, you're like, I just got to go. And then you just do the things that need to be done rather than being this mental game of I have to, I should, I must. It just comes through you if you just slow down enough and then allow it to. And then things are birthed in their own time. Yeah. Yeah. And you start following your intuitive, um, your intuitive, uh, thoughts or your intuitive feelings and you start just being called in the directions that you need to go in rather than trying so hard and it really does like you said come from that place of just self-worth knowing that mm -hmm. and trusting you know that I yeah. trusting in life and trusting that there's something greater than us that's guiding us and with us mm 
and that's helping us and that we can actually just receive that. Yeah. Yeah. It's big. <laughs> it's a big step. Um, how can, how can we follow your work and mm. connect with you more? Um, I'm hoping that we'll see each other this winter, but um, as far as online, how can people uh, get in touch with you and follow what you're up to? Mm-hmm. So uh, I have a website called embodiedwisdom.ca, and I do actually have, it's interesting, I have some of my artwork for sale on there, like some prints, and there's stuff coming there, but it's one of those things that's being birthed in its own time, so you can definitely check that out. Um, the other piece is Instagram and that's, I'm pretty big on my Instagram. So if anything is up and coming, you'll see it there. So it's embodied wisdom on Instagram. And I also have a Facebook page embodied wisdom and I'll just give a little bit of a, um, maybe a little bit of a spoiler alert. So (laughs) the practice that is being birthed right now, the offering, Um, something very, uh, it's so there, and it's just, you know, in its own time coming about, but very much um, a practice of moving through the body in alignment with the seasons. So like we were already talking about how in the peak of the summer, our energy is, you know, this, our crown chakra at summer solstice is absolutely... um, Uh, ripe. It's like right there. It's like activated. We're feeling it. And at the depth of the winter, at the winter solstice, it's in the soles of our feet. And so with that knowledge, you can actually start to map out where the body is activated in alignment with the sun cycle and the moon cycle. And then we can start to work on practices, embodiment practices to help to either balance it or to harness the energy and so right now we're very much in the realm of the heart mm-hmm. and and then it's something that we all start um, becoming aware of so there is this practice birthing where people will be able to join me on that journey through the body as we travel throughout the year there's just you know those little bits and pieces and very much right now I'm grounding down into my local community and local space Yeah, yeah. because for me that's also a grounding practice. I agree. Yeah. I can be online and I can do it for a while but the the call for me often is to come back and be face to face because I can get too like in that cosmic realm just even being online so much where I start to like you were saying if you get too up there, you even start to lose your ability to like fully connect with people. Like you get a little bit socially anxious. And you're like, absolutely. I mean, well, yeah, I work from home by myself mm-hmm. on some very uh, esoteric ideas, like all day. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of having to come back from that. Like I do a few days of that, and then all of a sudden, I'm realizing, like, oh whoa, my social skills are, like, really needing some, like, some tuning and attention right now. Like, I need to, uh, yeah, like, I remember I got a call last week, and I was doing, like, a ton of these interviews and was just, like, really in my laptop for too many days in a row. And I, my friend called me, and I, like, answered the phone, and he, like, told me this great story, and it was super funny. And, like, I had nothing. I was just, like, (laughs) and then I started up, I was, like, I'm really sorry. I've been in my own. I need to. Can we get, like let's go get a beer because I need to like come back. Um, so yeah, this is super important, and um, I'm really happy that you're doing the work that you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I personally need it. This is medicine that I need on a really regular basis, mm-hmm. um, and I'm sure a lot of the women. I'm assuming mostly women tuning into this mm-hmm. can absolutely agree. Like, yeah, that's something. I could use to balance things out a bit more. So thank you for sharing your medicine with Mm -hmm. us today. And um, yeah, I would encourage everyone to get on your newsletter to hear about when things are coming up. So thank you so much, Michelle. It was great to talk to you. Yeah, you too. And I I definitely throw out practices here and there while I'm like starting to birth this. So if you keep following me, a bunch of like 
free practices will come out. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Okay, well, thank you, sweetie. It's so good to talk to you. Yeah, I'm so glad you're doing this, Katie. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> um.